In this video, I'm going to talk about the diuretics and their mechanism of action. So how do diuretics produce a diuresis? Well, all the currently available diuretics block sodium reabsorption in the kidney tuber. So that's their common mechanism of action. Whenever you're going to block sodium reabsorption, there are going to be more particles in the tubular fluid. So there's more water drawn in. Or you can also say there's less water reabsorption. And whenever you, you have less water reabsorption, you're going to increase urine flow. Now let's think about next, how can you block sodium reabsorption? And to answer this question, we need to understand how is sodium reabsorbed in the kidney tubule. Well, you probably remember that two thirds of the sodium gets reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tuber. But this is not facilitated by just one transporter. This is facilitated by several transporters, like the sodium proton exchanger, S-glute, some sodium amino acid transporters, and some sodium is also taken up paracellularly. Then when we go to the thick ascending limb, we have about 25% of the sodium reabsorption happening via NKCC, and some of the sodium is also taken up back paracellularly. Then in the distal convoluted tubule, we have NCC, about 5 to 10% of the sodium reabsorption happens here. And then a little bit um, left for the ENAC, which is located in the connecting tubule collecting duct. So if you want to block sodium reabsorption, well, you should just block any of these transporters. And certainly the most effective diuretic would be to use to block sodium reabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubule because that's where most of the sodium reabsorption happens. But remember, there are several transporters that are responsible for taking back the sodium. So if you just block one of them, you're only going to get a part of the two thirds blocked. So here you can see the complete kidney tubule and all the different targets of the diuretics. So Drugs that act in the proximal convoluted tubule are the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. And as the name already implies, they block carbonic anhydrase. And via a mechanism that I will explain in a second, indirectly block NHE. And that's really how they block sodium reabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubule. The loop diuretics act in a loop, loop of Hähnle, which goes here and here, and they block NKCC a transporter that is responsible for taking back about 25% of the sodium. And then in the distal convoluted tuber, we find NCC, that's a target of the thiazide diuretics. And then in the collecting duct, we have ENAC, and that's the target of potassium sparing diuretics. We will now talk about each of the different classes more in detail. Let's start with the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. An example would be acetazolamide. So the name already tells you what they do. They block carbonic anhydrase. And what does the carbonic anhydrase do? Well, it's important for generating carbonic acid out of water and CO2. But if you don't have this enzyme, if it's blocked, you're not going to provide protons and bicarb. Well, if you don't provide protons, the NHE can't work because it pumps the protons out and takes back the sodium. So therefore you can already predict really how they produce diuresis is by blocking indirectly NHE and blocking sodium reabsorption. I just want to mention that carbonic anhydrase is not only found inside the cell, it's also found as a brush border enzyme and therefore is responsible for making water and CO2 which will then supply here the carbonic anhydrase to make the carbonic acid. The next diuretic class are the loop diuretics. And here the name implies really where they act, so the location of the drug action, and that's in the loop of Hinle. And what they do is they block this triple transport, the NKCC, that takes back sodium, chloride, and potassium. But again, the mechanism of action is here just to block sodium reabsorption and whenever you block sodium reabsorption, you're going to lose more sodium in the urine and therefore you're going to also increase urine flow because water is going to follow. Then we have the thiazide diuretics and note here that we have here a name that implies the chemistry of these drugs. They are thiazides and they block NCC and the NCC is a co-transporter that takes back sodium and chloride. 
The mechanism of action should be pretty straightforward by now. Again, we block sodium reabsorption. Therefore, we're going to lose more sodium. Water is going to follow, and we're going to increase also urine flow. The next drug class are the potassium-sparing diuretics. And we, here, we actually have to differentiate between dr two drug classes within this potassium-sparing diuretics. They are, first of all, drugs like triamterin or amyloride that directly block ENAC. Well, if they directly block ENAC, you're not going to take up sodium, you're going to lose the sodium, and therefore water is going to follow, and you're going to increase urine flow. But there are also other drugs that are called potassium-sparing diuretics that do not directly target ENAC, but do so indirectly. And these are drugs, steroid analogs like spironolactone or aplerinone. And what they do, they're really mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists. So they block aldosterone receptor. Well, aldosterone is a hormone and that acts as a nuclear receptor. And what they, in the end, really do, because they block the aldosterone receptor, they're going to have less expression of the ENAC, which is kind of regulated by aldosterone. So indirectly, they're also going to block the expression of ENAC, and therefore, you're going to get less sodium reabsorbed, and also going to lose more sodium, water follows, and urine flow is increased. So here, we just return to the big picture overview, to list again all the different targets that we had, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor that indirectly block NHE, the loop diuretics acting at the loop and block NKCC, the thiazide diuretics block NCC, and then the potassium spurring diuretics that either directly or indirectly block ENAC. But again, all of them block sodium reabsorption in the kidney tubule to different extents, thereby losing sodium in the urine and therefore increase urinary flow rate. This concludes the video on the mechanism of action of diuretics.